It's me, Doc Rock, and I'm cruising with my homeboy, Philip. What's up, Philip? What's up, man? How you doing? Good, good. Uh, Philip, one of my best friends, but actually today I don't know him, okay? Because I'm gonna I have to interview him for my in my skin a blog. You know about my new blog? Uh, I've heard about it. Why don't you tell me a little bit more about it? You know, I have this crazy addiction for the Moleskine, as you can tell mm -hmm. by the myriad of selection here on the table. But also, I'm just trying to get into writing. And, like, I'm starting out with, like, knowing anything. Mm -hmm. uh, knowing anything. How, knowing nothing. So I just want to talk to a bunch of people who are also, like, either writers or want to be writers and just try to get... I don't know, help, ideas, suggestions, whatever. And it seems to me, as I looked, all writers were into Moleskine. It's like true. It's like the tool you have to have. So I just named the blog that because it was catchy. And two, I really love Moleskine. So I'm going to assume, I'm just going to ask, do you use Moleskine? Yes, I do. And why do you like it? Just, it's really convenient as far as notebooks go. I've had, like, the, the really crappy... Mead, six to nine cent at Walmart before Holy back to school stuff kind of he thing. Said, he said mead. Mead. <laughs> what, was it, what was that plastic mead. one we had back in school? Dude, I think this, they're um, Trapper Keeper. Trapper Keeper. Trapper Keeper. Oh my God. Yeah. That's super and, funny. <laughs> you know, after a while, they just kind of start falling apart and stuff like that. So I forgot. I think you might have turned me on to the Moleskine, but like I bought my first one and that's all I've been writing in ever since then. Do you know honestly how I got into Moleskine, which is hella funny? No. I was reading a book by a guy named David Allen okay. and it's called Getting Things Done. And he sort of started this cult of people into productivity, the GTDers or getting things done people. Mm -hmm. And he talks about having uh, what's known as a ubiquitous capture tool. This guy right here is mine. Actually, I have two things strapped together. So this is my number one. If I have to go somewhere where I need to be thin, I'll take a thin guide. But this is the normal, you know, soft cover, you know, Moleskine notebook. And he talked about having a notebook that you can have in your pocket with you at all times because, according to David Allen, your stress comes from making a promise with yourself or having an idea or something in your head not getting it out, forgetting about it later, mm -hmm. and then now you're all stressed out because you didn't, you know, complete a task. Or as the productivity cats call it, you have an open loop. Okay. So I went looking for notebooks. So I strolled into Borders, and all the notebooks they had in there were designed for girls. And I get <laughs> that because in traditionally the diary thing, it was kind of a girl thing, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. And then I was like, well, what does a guy do when he needs a notebook? And I remembered these blank memorandum notebooks we had in the military, which look exactly like this, except for they're brown. And it just said memorandum. But um, they were made for the U.S. government by a company called Moleskine. And that company basically had disappeared. So the government was just kind of faking it. So I left borders, ran into Barnes & Noble. And I saw the sign. And it said Moleskine. And I was like, wait a minute. I remember that from, you know, basic training. So I went looking for it, and they had the brown ones, but then they had the traditional black ones. Mm -hmm. So I bought my first one, which is about 20 of these ago, and it looks exactly like this. And inside, there was a little pamphlet that said Ernest Hemingway used it to write his books. Um, a guy named, um, what is his name? Oh, my God. Blank. Brain Charles, just went. Charles Dickens. Charles Dickens. A uh, yeah. bunch of other famous writers wrote books using these guys. So I'm like, okay, well, if they did it. <laughs> Must be good enough. <laughs> hey, right? According to Steve McCovey, <laughs> right? You got to, you know, model already effective people. So mm -hmm. I bought it. I fell in love with it. And then as I did some research online, I found out a lot of people were using it. You know, so I've been recommending them to people. But um, outside of just the fact that it's always with you, but is there anything specifically about it that you like in comparison to regular notebooks? Hmm. I, like, well, I guess, like, being my age and, like, in this day and age, everyone's into, like, emails and texting and stuff like that, so I noticed that my penmanship was really lacking. Like, I mean, because, you know, like, everyone sends emails, everyone, like, it's no one goes on the phone anymore like it's all about texting emails instant messaging and so when I would actually have to write things it, my handwriting was horrible so I got into the habit of trying to write stuff down and I guess I actually ended up going to, to Fisher and buying some of the, the cheap notebooks and 
just all the pages started falling out. It was really crazy. So I, I bought my first Moleskine you know, and just, I don't know, just the way it's made, like the real small details and stuff, it, it just makes it like a really solid notebook. And I take it around pretty much everywhere I go just to dot, jot ideas down. And everyone trips out because no one's into writing stuff anymore. This is true. It was like, hey, where's your computer? The funny thing is, I am a computer dude. I have the computer, the iPhone, the iPad, you know, and all these other things with me, but the Moleskine, when it's time to get to it, I think it's it's sort of, um, it's going to sound super stupid. It's kind of spiritual to write in there, like you're letting out your, your creative juice. Uh, let me show, show the people, in case you don't know, Philip is talking about. First of all, there's the fancy little rubber band. The rubber band is cool. Second, here's a neat little pocket. I store like receipts in there in case I need to, you know, write something off or get a reimbursement. Here's a receipt for a uh, doctor visit because I need to send that to the health insurance company. So I like this little pocket in the back. It comes in handy. I've actually stored credit cards and a little cash in here and just use it as a wallet. Mm -hmm. um, one of the famous characteristics is this little marker place thing, which is just a ribbon that, you know, you can place in, but it's just nice. I mean, you can get in there, you can write your stuff. I like the ones with little boxes because you can use the grids to help, you know, draw lines and things. But, yeah, um, I like having it with me. One thing I did notice is as I was doing research online, there was a lot of talk about what's the proper pen to write in a Moleskine. And the most common answer I found online was a G2. That's, that's really strange because that's the only pen that I use. Really? Yeah. It seems everyone says this guy is the perfect partner with your Moleskine. I have a problem with G2s. What is the problem? It's a G2. <laughs> I have a Mont Blanc, right? Uh -huh. I like to write with my Mont Blanc. Uh -huh. But as it turns out, the natural cartridge for a Mont, Jean, Mont Blanc, the fine liner rollerball, is a little too heavy for this. The G2 does flow perfectly across the pages. For some reason, it just matches Moleskine paper. So what I've found is there's a way to modify the G2 cartridge to work in the Mont Blanc. <laughs> and so, as stupid as it sounds, I put the ghetto-ass 89-cent G2 cartridge in a $400 Mont Blanc, and I used it as my pen of choice. Interesting. And the new thing that I recently found, this is a Sharpie liquid pencil. I like to write in pencil. Uh -huh. um, what's neat about this guy is a couple of days later it turns permanent like a regular sharpie. Okay. So, but it it flows like a pencil. It, you know, it's erasable, and this is another good compliment. Um, on the table, I put out some more things I want to show off people. This is the Moleskine calendar. So when you become like addicted to them, it has a little number. You put ten and a ten because it's October now. And then when you're done with October, you place him in his uh, section on the book here, and then you pull out the next one, which is 11, Interesting. right? And then when you're done, for that year, if you want to keep all your little you know, appointments on hand, you have a little nice box like this, throw him on the desk. Oh, table's glass. <laughs> <laughs> you throw him on the desk and you, you, know, you get to keep it, but I thought this was a really nice little setup. Um, and when you buy one, you get a little thing here that tells you all about the Moleskine. Basically, an Italian company revamped the historical Moleskines, and that's what we have today. And it's not, there's no Moleskin involved. It's actually Moleskina because that's just the way it's pronounced in Italian. But I just saw a video recently. The company gave up on trying to teach us how to say it, so they say, say it however you want to say it. <laughs> so do you say Moleskin, Moleskine, Moleskine, or Moleskina? I used to say Moles, Moleskin. <laughs> and then I've since then switched over to because Moleskine. Because some big jackass keeps yelling at yeah, you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oops. <laughs> about about ye tall with no hair. <laughs> um, another cool thing that they recently come out with is these, um, they call passion journals. This one is a wine journal. And here's an open version. I'm gonna actually going to use it for sake because I, I prefer sake over wine. But it's neat how they... They tab it out, the little sections, based on sparkling white, rosé red. And if you look at one of the pages, it gives you the opportunity to say what type of wine it is, what you liked about it, what you paired with it, little notes, and a place to stick the label. So I, I thought that was kind of cool. 
It's really, really neat. So what do you write mostly in your Moleskine, Philip? Just everything. Can you tell people? Yeah, yeah. Is I it can, safe? No, okay. it's... it's, it's like, are you like, I hope it's are you like I hope it's writing, rating the girls like, oh, you know, you know she, like, she Mary head. was like a five, you know, she looked <laughs> no, like a no, ten, but her that, brain, you know, that. minus five. P, it's, it's strictly PG. It's PG? Uh, yeah. <laughs> kind of, kind of. Okay, kind so of. what's going on? Uh, basically, I write pretty much everything, because what I found was, just like at the end of the day, just w w with all the stuff that goes on throughout, like, you know, an average day, I find it just easier to write everything down, get it out of my system, flush it out. And so when tomorrow rolls around, it's like a brand new day. And so I do a lot, like a little bit of that. Um, I write drafts for my blog, pretty much. So like I'll have like certain blog topics I want to blog about. And what I'll do is I'll reserve like a few pages for, for that topic. And I'll just jot notes down as they come along to me. So I just have pages of like unfinished blog posts. But like for some reason, I just keep getting more ideas and I'll just like go back to it and just keep it's writing. It's a great place to get an idea out of your head while it's fresh. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's fresh. So anyway, that's a quick look at inmyskinade.com. Don't forget, check us out again. We'll have another video coming soon. I want to talk to you in the next video about free writing and like how to do it. I'll explain how I do it. I'll let Philip explain how he does it. And... We'll get onto that. So again, it's mmaskini.com. Thank you for watching. I'm Doc Rock. Who are I'm you? Philip. How does anybody find you if they want to be your friend? Facebook.com slash Mr. Han. M-I-S-T-E-R-H-A-N. That's like the dude from the Bruce Lee movies. Mr. Dude, Mr. Han. Even born, man. Oh my God, Enter the Dragon. Son. He <laughs> was the villain in the I Bruce wasn't Lee even movies. Born. Yo, that was the guy. You know the Bruce Lee poster where he's all cut up? That Mr. Han did that. He cut his ass up. <laughs> you, cut, you cut Bruce Lee, dude. No, no, dude. You should he, be he shot. Was, I'm so sorry, Bruce Lee. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Later. Thanks.